Good morning, YouTube. Right, okay, so last night I got home um, from doing a day's work, as normal, um, and I had a message from Jay Sharp. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Jay Sharp when I looked. Um, about fencing down, uh, down or up a hill. Um, there is no real difference. Um, and unfortunately, I can't tell you how to... It's not ever going to go the same way twice. That's what I'm trying to say. So, um, a slope or a hill to you might be a really big, deep incline. Um, and then I'd suggest just using close boarding. It'd be a lot easier for you. Um, whereas variants and gradients all differ matter. Um, so, I can't really tell you the, 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 the sizes, unfortunately, because I'm not on the job. Um, and to be honest, half the jobs, it tends to be a wing and a prayer, really. Um, and what I would like to try and do as well, rather than have like the first section a massive drop then a then a, and a section then another massive drop in a section i'd rather do it equally over um every single panel so you've got like say so just say for shits and giggles it's three inch drop so you've got three inch on every single post rather than the first one six inches and ne next to a level and then the other one's six inches um i do try and bunch them together though if the hill isn't such a slope i will prop the gravel boards on things like uh, bricks, stuff like that. You can easily hide them um, with piling up the dirt next to it and stuff like that. A lot of people, when you when you come to doing hills, especially if it's on such a, a big gradient, so like I've just, you have to bear with me. I've only literally just scribbled on this. So if you can see that, can you see that? Yeah. So if the hill is such a big gradient, you've got a gap here. What I would suggest, let me follow you. So if you've got quite a big gradient and you are feeling that, so when you see that and you've got a gap here, my drawings aren't the best by the way, you know, just have to put up with them, um, dig it into the ground. So half your gravel board is in the ground. So you're digging out basically, you'll dig out half of it and then prop the other half up. Um, the one thing I will say to you, if you are putting a six foot high fence up and you're used to putting in an eight, eight foot concrete post, as soon as you get to a three inch drop, anything more than a three inch drop, I'd instantly upgrade your post to the next size up. You will end up chopping some out, unless the ground is so soft you can dig it all out. Um, but it's just what you've got to do, because what you've got to understand is, if if the post... So you can see my beautiful face. Um, let's see if we can see that. If this post here... Uh, yeah. So like the, this section here is like three inches down, you're instantly out of the ground three more inches because you are digging down here. You're gonna be digging this bit out. So it's three inches less in the ground. I wouldn't recommend putting a, an eight foot high, a six foot high fence, not an eight foot high fence, a six foot high fence out of the ground any less than 18 inches maximum. Uh, I have put them in, I have said this in the past, I have had to put them in four to five inches maximum um, but they were around in between houses, drain pipes, all that sort of stuff. And you put, you just put a hell of a lot more concrete around, but that's not what the point is. So for, for fencing on a hill, I would always, always start at the top. You can do it from the bottom. Don't get me wrong. You can do it from the bottom, but, um, I was always told, and I've always done it this way. So maybe it's just me being a stick in the mud is always start at the top. Um, and then work your way down. And what you'll do is, you'll put your first section in. So you'll put this first section in, dig it into the ground a little bit, because obviously it's downhill. You need to make that one flat. So you make this one level with the ground. You will have to dig in, and then when you've put this post in, you will then find out what your drop is to the next one. So you would tape measure from the top there, going down, and it is gonna be bigger than eight foot. I can guarantee you that now. Um, obviously if it's a drop. Um, so whatever that is, you need to take out here basically and that will give you your level that's it um, I really want to do this on film because it'll, it'll explain a lot more um, you know but the only tips I can really give you are put your first section in make that level with the ground so you dig out virtually all of it so it's laying on the ground but you put your post in your next first post is obviously your next post in and then see where that comes. You know, you could probably get away with digging the old ground out again and laying it flat, but if you only have, if you can get away with digging half of it out and then putting it in, it'll give you a less of a drop. Um, drop wise, yeah, again, I can't really tell you, unfortunately, 
how big a drop to put in and stuff like that. All I will say to you is the bigger the drop, the bigger your post is going to have to be because if you think about it, when you've put an eight foot post in the ground, normally it's two foot level. I don't know why I'm doing this. You can't see anything. It's two foot level at both sides. But as soon as you drop that one side down, that is whatever that drop is less in the ground below. So you will have to upgrade your posts. So, you know, if you're if you're doing a six by six or a six foot high fence and there's like a about a six or eight inch drop, um, then you're definitely gonna need a nine foot post. Um, so there you go. Hope it helps you, fella. Um, I'm assuming you're a fella. Could be wrong. Um, I will try and get a qu <laughs> well this is the thing i can't pick the jobs i mean i've got another job in a couple of weeks and it's got a slight incline to the end of in fact actually the whole thing slopes up um but yeah again it's close boarding so you do that totally different if you've got panels and posts that is the way to go if you're doing close boarding which is basically post and rail then you what you do is you set your first post however high you want it out the ground then you go to all the way to the other end and set your post again uh at that height so it, it will be different heights, but that's the whole point because it's going uphill or downhill, whatever you're doing. So you set your post either side at the right height. So say you're doing a six foot high fence, you want it what? No less than six foot out of the ground, really. I mean, I mean, um, I'll be doing a uh, what is it? A six foot high fence. Actually, it'll be a little over six foot because I'll put the post seventy four inches out of the ground, which is two inches higher than six foot. So it has to be high enough. It's got a gravel board on the bottom, so it'll be six foot six almost. So close boarding, you put a post in at the beginning, post in at the end, you measure from the floor there. You put measure from the floor, so many inches up, say 12 inches, and you do the same on the other side, and you put in your string line along that line. And then every time you put a post in, you will have a mark so many inches down from the top of the post to your line. You must score it. So then when you've dug your hole out, you put your post in and that line should meet that, your string line should meet that line. Um, and that will give you a constant slope up. Um, and then what you do is you just set your, you set your, um, your if you put boards on, that is, you might not put the boards on, but if you put um, gravel boards on, which I'd recommend, um, then you can set up another string line at six inches, basically, at top and bottom, and then just go from there. You don't have to use, there's no point, spirit level insulin that's going uphill, because it might change. So you just, yet again, six inches from the floor up, and then put a string line on, put a string line on the other side. And when you put your gravel boards up to it, you just go up to the line, and it gives you a perfect level of what the fence is going to anyway. Um, hopefully there's not been too much of a waffle, and I've lost anybody. Um, I may even redo this, you may not see this, and I may do the, the maths and the um, the drawings on computer and stick them up here somewhere. But if you don't see that, then it's what you've got. And I'll try and get a fence that's got a good slope on it so I can show you. So hope that helps you, Jay, and I'll see you soon.